Magkano ba talaga ang kailangan mo para makapag-retire ng maayos sa Pilipinas? Hey guys, it's Sally here and today we're diving into something we've all thought about at least once, retiring in the Philippines. Yep, I know many of you are out there working hard and dreaming of the day you can finally say, I'm going home for good. Pero ang tanong, magkano ba talaga ang kailangan mo para makapag-retire ng maayos sa Pinas? Let's break it down, shall we? So, you're abroad, working those long hours, sending money back home, and thinking about the day you'll finally retire. The dream is clear. You're picturing a beautiful house, lots of time with family, maybe even a small business on the side. Sounds perfect, right? But before you start packing your bags, let's get real about what it will actually cost to live that dream. When I was still a nurse in Canada, I used to daydream about retiring back home in the Philippines. I'd picture myself sipping coffee in the morning with a view of the mountains or maybe the beach. And of course, spending time with family. Walang tatalo doon. But then, reality hit me. I realized that if I wanted that kind of life, I needed to plan and prepare financially. Hindi pwedeng bara-bara lang. First of all, there's no one-size-fits-all answer. Everyone's different. Some people want to retire in the city, while others are dreaming of a quiet life by the beach. Me, I used to think retiring meant just relaxing and enjoying life until I realized na gusto ko pa rin maging busy with something I love. Kaya nga I transitioned from nursing to entrepreneurship so I could have the best of both worlds. Okay, let's talk numbers. Don't worry, I won't make your nose bleed with too much math, promise. But here's the deal. Retiring in the Philippines can be as affordable or as expensive as you make it. It all depends on your lifestyle. For starters, let's talk about housing. Kung may lupa ka na at bahay, congrats! You're already ahead of the game. Pero kung wala pa, this will be your biggest expense. On average, a decent house in the province might set you back around 2 million to 5 million pesos, depending on the location. Kung sa city ka naman, prepare to shell out more, maybe 5 million to 10 million pesos. Or even more if you want to live in a high-end area. Now, some of you might be thinking, pwede naman sigurong mag na lang. Sure, that's an option too. Renting can range from 10,000 pesos to 30,000 pesos a month, depending on where you're staying. But if you're like me, who likes to have something to call their own, then buying might be a better option in the long run. Besides, there's something about having your own space na ikaw ang nag-design, ikaw ang nagpagawa, di ba? It's fulfilling. Now, for utilities, water, internet, electricity, the basics. If you're living in a modest home, expect to pay 3000 to 5000 a month. Not too bad, di ba? But if you're planning to live in luxury, well those aircon bills can add up, especially in the summer. I remember when we first moved back to the Philippines, we thought we are prepared for the best. We thought we are prepared for the heat. But boy, I was wrong. The heat in the Philippines is different. It's a whole other level. So yeah, that aircon will be your best friend. But be ready for the bills. Let's move on to food. Kasi sino ba namang hindi mahilig kumain, right? If you're living alone, you can budget around 10,000 to 15,000 a month for groceries. But if you're like us, a family of five who loves to eat out or try new food, baka madagdagan yan. Throw in some weekend trips to a nice restaurant and you're looking at maybe 20,000 a month. One thing I love about the Philippines is the food. And the best part, masarap na, mura pa. You can have a feast for a fraction of what it would cost abroad. But then again, if you're someone who enjoys imported goods, be prepared to pay a premium. That's the trade-off. But hey, nothing beats fresh fish and veggies from the local market, right? And of course, there's healthcare. 
As we age, kailangan nating maging handa dito. Health insurance can range from 15,000 pesos to 50,000 pesos annually, depending on the coverage. And let's not forget the occasional checkup or hospital visit. Best to have at least 5,000 to 10,000 a month set aside for this. Now, I know some of you are thinking, eh di ba may PhilHealth naman? Yes, that's true. PhilHealth can cover some of your expenses, but it's always good to have a backup. If there's one thing I've learned from my nursing days, it's that you can never be too prepared when it comes to your health. And in the Philippines, private hospitals are the way to go if you want top-notch care. And what about fun? Retirement isn't just about sitting around all day. You'll want to enjoy your time, travel, see friends, maybe even start a new hobby. Budget around 10,000 pesos to 20,000 pesos a month for leisure activities. Trust me, mas masaya ang buhay pag may pang travel ka. I love traveling and I think it's one of the best things you can do in retirement. There are so many beautiful places in the Philippines na hindi mo pa napupuntahan. I bet. And the best part, you don't need to break the bank. You can explore beaches, mountains, and cities all within your budget. Kaya nga, part of our retirement plan is to visit as many places as we can. Who knows, baka may mahanap pa kaming bagong retirement spot. So, let's put this all together. If you're planning a simple life in the province, you might need around 30,000 pesos to 50,000 pesos a month to live comfortably. That's about 360,000 pesos to 600,000 pesos a year. Not too bad, right? But if you want to live in the city, have a few luxuries, and travel from time to time, aim for 60,000 to 100,000 pesos a month or 720,000 to 1.2 million a year. And before you start thinking, grabe ang laki naman. Remember that these are just estimates. You can always adjust your lifestyle to match your budget. The key is planning ahead. And here's a tip. If you're still abroad, start by living as if you're already retired in the Philippines. What do I mean by that? Try to simulate your retirement expenses by setting aside a similar amount each month while you're still earning. That way, you'll have a better idea of what it takes and you can adjust your savings and investments accordingly. Now, let's talk about the big question. How much do you really need to save for retirement? I'm sure you've all thought about this at some point. Maybe you have a number in mind, or maybe you're just starting to plan. But before you get too comfortable, let's dig a little deeper because what seems like enough today might not be enough in the future. Here's why. First of all, we have to consider inflation. What your money can buy today won't be the same 20 years from now. Alam niyo naman mga kaibigan, tumataas ang mga presyo ng bilihin. So, while certain amount might sound solid now, we have to plan for the fact that prices will go up. What's comfortable today might feel tight later on. Secondly, there's healthcare. As we age, healthcare costs tend to increase. It's just a reality we have to face. You don't want to be in a situation where you're dipping into your savings for medical bills, diba? Right? And let's be real, while Phil Health can help, it won't cover everything, especially if you want access to quality care in private hospitals. So when you're thinking about your retirement fund, make sure you are setting aside extra for medical emergencies and regular checkups. Lastly, there's the issue of life expectancy. I mean, we all hope to live long, healthy lives, right? Pero ang ibig sabihin nito, kailangan tumagal din ang pera mo. If you're planning to retire at 60 and you live until 90, wow, that's 30 years of living expenses you need to cover. So while a certain amount might sound good for 10 years, what about the next 20 years? So. What's the solution? How do you adjust your retirement savings goal? It's important to aim higher if you really want to live comfortably and not just survive. A good rule of thumb is to add in some extra padding. 
Maybe you want to target a larger amount depending on your lifestyle and where you plan to live. For example, if you plan to retire in the province where the cost of living is lower, your savings might stretch further. But if you're eyeing the city life or want to travel frequently, aim for a bigger amount. Even though there's no definite number, since everyone's situation is different, you should have a rough idea from the numbers we've discussed earlier. It's not about just scraping by, guys. It's about thriving and enjoying the fruits of your labor. And don't forget, retirement isn't just about saving. It's also about how you grow your money. I'm talking about investments, side businesses, and passive income streams. If you have investments in real estate, stocks, or even small businesses, that is going to help you generate extra income during retirement. This is where the magic happens because you're not just relying on savings. You're also creating streams of income that can continue even when you stop working. So, what's the takeaway here? It's simple. There's no magic number. You have to consider factors like inflation, healthcare, and how long you expect to live. The key is to start planning early, save consistently, and think long-term. And if you have opportunities to grow your money through investments or a business, take them. Retirement isn't about waiting to stop working. It's about creating the financial freedom to live the life you want on your own terms. Thanks for hanging out with me today. If you found this helpful, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe for more tips on how to make your dreams a reality. Until next time, keep pushing, keep dreaming, and keep believing. Kita kit sa Pinas. Now that you know this, watch this next.